You may know her as Levita Alizé Jenkins, but she's come a long way as she's over 30 years in the game. She's dominated on the screen with hit shows such as The Steve Harvey Show, BET's First Wives Club, Ava DuVernay's Cherish the Day, and so much more. Aside from starring in some of your favorite shows and movies, she's turned the camera around to be behind the scenes. You can catch her producing and directing films with her independent production company, Nina Holiday Entertainment. She's here with me today as my very special guest on I Do Film. Please give a warm welcome to my girl, Terry J. Vaughn. Hey, hey, thank you. Thanks for coming I'm today. I'm so happy to be here. Yes, I'm so excited to um, talk to you about your career and see what kind of gems you can drop for our audience. Okay, we'll see. All right, <laughs> so we're going to uh, jump in on a little icebreaker, this or that. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. In the bathroom with Terry or I look good naked? In the bathroom with Terry, even though they were both fun, in the bathroom with Terry was at home and I was talking about my kids, which I like to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, ranch or blue cheese? I'm going to say blue cheese, but I don't do dairy. I would do neither. But if I had to, I would do blue cheese. Mm -hmm. That's why you look good. <laughs> TV or movies? Uh, TV. Loud neighbors or nosy neighbors? Ooh, loud neighbors. <laughs> Directing or producing? Directing. Janelle Abrams on All of Us or Levita Alizé Jenkins on The Steve Harvey Show? Oh, come on. I, I love both of those. They were super fun characters, but I'm going to have to say Levita. Okay, Levita. My favorite as well. Absolutely. <laughs> so you've been in this game 30 plus years. Yes. What was the one TV show or movie that made you say, I want to do this. Um, before I got into it? Before you got into it. Um, well, this, how I got into it was like, was crazy. But I will say when I first, the first thing I, I got started in was on stage. So that's where I got bit by the bug of acting. Loved it. And um, the movie that was out during the time that I was watching over and over again was, um, Strictly, biz strictly business, because I was following Halle Berry. Okay. Yes. So I was just a super fan of hers, and that was the movie that was out at the time. So that she, that was very inspirational. Mm hmm. And I guess you kind of answered this a little bit, but how did you get your start in acting? Um, which is really just random, because I was in college, mm -hmm. um, my fifth year in college. And I was actually studying um, advertising. Um, I didn't know anything about the entertainment business or that you could have a career. I didn't know anything about it. It was never on my radar. Um, and when I was in college, there was a friend that was recruiting girls for a Miss Black California pageant. Okay, California. Yes, <laughs> so I grew up in the Bay Area, grew up in San Francisco, went to college at Cal State Hayward. And um, so me and some of my friends, we were like, oh yeah, whatever, we'll do a pageant. What, what do we need to do? Whatever. And when it came to the talent part, I had no idea what I was going to do. I didn't sing, I didn't I dance. I, I just didn't know what I was going to do. So me and my mother, we came up with the idea of doing a monologue from a play. And it was from um, For Colored Girls Who Considered Suicide When the Rainbow Is Enough. And there was a poem in there um, done by the lady in blue because they were all colors. Um, so I, it was the lady in blue and it was a poem called Sorry. And so I performed this monologue for my um, talent part. And one of the producers, I mean, one of the um, judges of the pageant was a producer of a play that he was casting to tour the country. And so after the pageant was over, he asked me if I would be interested in auditioning for this play. And I was like, well, what's an audition? How do you, what is that? What do I do? You know, just really, I was always saucy. <laughs> I love it. So I was like, what that mean? What do, what do I do for an audition? So he was like, come to the Black Repertory Theater, which was in Black, um, Berkeley, California. And um, he said, bring a picture and a resume. So I show up. I, again, don't know nothing about acting. So I came with a regular Polaroid picture that I had taken with my college roommate the night before. And I mean, I know 
we're, we know what the Polaroid we picture is. We know what the was. Polaroid is. Yes. And um, a regular working resume. Like I had the Marriott Hotel, Avis Rent-A-Car, McDonald's, because those were my jobs that I had had. And so I show up at the theater and there were like these real actors there. And I saw the eight by 10 black and white glossies, their pictures. I was like, oh, I don't have that. I got my little Polaroid. And they had real resumes, um, acting resumes. And so I just go in the corner, wait for my turn, because they're all doing their theater uh, exercises, humming, getting their voices ready, stretching, moaning, doing all this weird stuff that I just thought was super weird because I'm just a girl from the ghetto. And I was like, whatever, that's weird. I'm going to sit over here. <laughs> and um, so they finally call my name. I go in. I meet the playwright. I meet the director. Um, the director's name is Paul Roach. He is the reason why I am an actor. He is the Paul. reason why I am in this business. Um, so they gave me material to read. I read the audition. He was like, can you read it for me again? And this girl, she's really sassy. And, da -da. and I was like, oh, I okay, I can do that. <laughs> so I read it again. I read it sassy. And they called me that night and was like, we want to offer you this role in this play. We're touring the country. We got It was a 20 city tour, 40 city tour. And we'll pay you $400 a week. We cover your travel. And I was like, what? And I was like, yeah. Um, and it was David E. Talbert's very first play that he ever wrote. And I toured with that show for two years. And Paul Roach traveled with us. He was the director and he taught us the craft of acting. It was a traveling acting class every night. And it was just amazing. He introduced me to Stanislavski and Uta Hagen, like all the theater greats. And I just fell in love with it. And that's all I did since. I just studied, studied, studied the craft of acting. What a and way. that's how I got in. Well, that's a, a great way to get in. It's always those stories that you know, everyone tells that you'd be like, for real, that's how you got in. Yeah. I mean, you got bit by the bug and just kept going, right? Yeah. Because what were you studying in school? I thought I was going to be in advertising. So I knew I was, I was creative, but I didn't, you know, just growing up where I grew up, nobody was acting or, you know, being in the entertainment business. We didn't, we didn't know that wasn't on our radar. So, um, so yeah, Paul Roach changed my life. All right, Paul, you changed your life. <laughs> So fans fell in love with LaVita on the Steve Harvey show. Was it hard for you to walk away from that role? Um, it was, you know, it was bittersweet just leaving the whole cast, the whole show. It's such a turning point in my life. And um, yeah, I, lo I loved it. I loved going to work every day. I loved playing that character. Um, there was a moment, I had a moment was. I don't know if we were three seasons in or four or whatever. And I was like, oh, my God, I still have to do this voice. <laughs> so I kind of got tired of doing the voice, but I love that job. I can't even imagine being on set with you, Steve, Man. and Cedric the Entertainer. That you got Man. And don't let me forget about Wendy. Wendy. Yes. Yes. I bet that was some great times. So. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. Amazing. So you said, you know, three seasons in, you felt like I still had to do this voice. Um, was there ever a time that you ever felt like you wanted to give up in this entertainment world? Of course. It's, it's a tough business. It's really hard, um, you know, because you put so much of yourself in, in the work. Um, you put your heart, you put your emotions, you put all of it in so that, you know, it entertains people. You're putting yourself out there. And, you know, in those moments where the work isn't coming and you're auditioning over and over and you're not getting it and it gets very, very frustrating and heartbreaking at times. You get close. It comes down to you and one person and it goes the other way. It's heartbreaking. It really is. And then not to mention, you know, the financial aspect of it. It's like, it's great when you're working, but there could be chunks of time where you're not working and you have to, you know, so you got to be smart with your money when you're working, you got to stack because you don't know, you know, how long it's going to last. 
So yeah, there's definitely been moments throughout the journey where you're like, oh God, well, maybe this isn't for me anymore. Maybe I'm really not as talented as I thought I was. Maybe, maybe, maybe. And um, for me, it was always, my conversation with, with God was always, I didn't ask for this. You brought this to me. So you have to have a reason for me to be here. So I'm assuming you got another one around the corner for me. So that's all, that was always my pep talk for myself. That God put me here, so he's going to make it happen. Absolutely, because in, in that little conversation you just had, you dropped a gem for our audience. Okay. Be good stewards over your money in okay. between time. Really know how to balance it out just in case you are in between. You know, I was going to ask you what kept you going, but I think you answered it when you had that conversation with God and you knew there was a bigger yeah. picture. It's a bigger so. picture. It's a definitely a bigger purpose. And that's another thing. I think this is the kind of business, and especially from the acting standpoint, is you have to love it. You have to love it for a reason. Beyond, It can't be about fame um, or it, it can't even be about the money. It's... You have to want to do this for a bigger purpose. And that keeps you going. Like, I have to, my face has to be seen so little black girls can still continue to see images of themselves looking like themselves. Absolutely. My voice is important because I, because I did grow up in the hood. I want all the little girls that growing up in the hood to know that there's things outside of that hood when, you know, you just got to work for it. You can do it. I did it. I'm just like you. Those things are important. And those things keep me going. Like I can't get out. I can't stop because then I shortchange them. Right. Right. Good outlook on it. Um, I would just want to ask one thing. I don't know if you want to spill it, but was there any, was there a role that you wanted that you were so close to get it and you didn't get it? Yeah. And if so, what was that role? And who did you, uh, I won't say lose, but right. who Ended up getting, yes. Um, so, of course, there's been several of those moments. And because, you know, I have a lot of peers that are in this business that are really good friends of mine, it, it happens. Um, and so I'll just remember the very first one where I thought I just knew I had it because they kept calling me back. And I had great auditions and it was fun. Um, and then on my last audition, it was just me there and in walks me along and I'm like oh god <laughs> like I want her you know it's like yes I'm a fan of hers because this was before I knew her but she walked through the door and it was Friday I was up for the part that Nia played in Friday so they were like you know you're so dope we still want to give you you know something so they gave me the role that they ended up giving me which was still a huge blessing a friendship with regina was spun from that and nia and you know it was and i'm a part of a classic still yes. but yeah that was one that i really thought i was going to get it was going to be my first movie break and God said, not yet not yet not yet not yet so you broke into the director role in 2016 with the film Digital Lives Matter. Yes. Yes, I had the opportunity to be at that premiere. Yeah. Uh, as you pivoted, you know, into the director role, was it hard for people to take you serious early on? Of course. Yeah, and it, it's still, it's, um, it's change, shifting now, um, and it's always like a breath of fresh air when I'm sitting or seeing one of my peers that I haven't seen in a while, and they say things like, we've been watching you, you are killing it. And I'm like, oh, you guys are watching and paying attention because you just don't know because you're in your bubble. You're just working and doing the best you can. So you don't know what, you know, people are saying out there. But yeah, it definitely was. Um, and that's why I think it's important. And especially in the climate that we're in now, you got to do it yourself. You got to prove and just do it yourself. I mean, you were a part of that journey with us. You know, we had scraps. We were struggling to, you know, try to get it together mm -hmm. to get that movie shot. And just from the support of peers and um, people that believed in us, we were able to do it. Yeah, I really enjoyed that. That was really good, really funny. Thank um, you. So what are some of the difficulties do you have to face today, still staying relevant in the industry 
making sure your name stays out there, making sure you put out good content as you do uh, with Nina Holiday Entertainment. Um, so, yeah, it's a definitely a different climate now, especially with social media. Um, it's it's like you got to you got to work two or three jobs at a time because social media is a job. Yes. And, you know, I finally had to fold and be like, OK, I, I got to get active on it. Um, because I didn't come from that school. I came from the school of you go, you grind it out. You pound the pavement. You study your craft. You, um, you know, you go to those auditions and that's how you win the prize. Um, but now it's like you got to be seen more. You got to have your numbers up. You got to. And I'm like, what? That's, that's a like, full time job. Oh, my God. And that's a full time job. So. You know, there's a part of it that I love that's fun and exciting, like getting to communicate with your um, with your fans that way and getting letting them get to know you on a more of a personal level, kind of. But, you know, you got to be careful about how much you let in because, you know, some stuff is just private. Yeah. Um, so picking and choosing what to share, when to share um, that aspect of it is is exhausting sometimes too. Well, I think you're because doing you're still, job, I mean, because you still got to do your job. Yeah, you still, I still got to study my craft. I still got to, um, you know, do those 14 hour days on set and, and all the, all the things. So it's just another added layer of our job that we have to do. Sometimes you have to disconnect from that, that and job. Absolutely. Ooh. And sometimes you that's do have to. Job yeah, because is... it's it's draining. Yes, it is. And, you know, you got you do got to be careful because you got to protect yourself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you started your own independent production company, Nina Holiday Entertainment. Yeah. And so far you've what, produced about 16 films yeah. or so. Yeah. What would you say... Um, is the one thing that makes uh, your film stand out? Um, we we love to work with people that we love. So I feel like all of our projects are very tight-knit family, love, you know, we're support. It's, it's, a, it's, it's family. And it, it's, it's, it's not like going to work. It's like getting to play with your family. And when Cass Sears and I, when we started our company together, that was what we wanted to do. We started it because we wanted to create opportunity for our peers, for ourselves and our peers. And that's what we've been able to do. It's like we literally want to work with our peers, people that we love. And, you know, and then create, creating opportunities for new people that are coming up. So we're very specific in that when we're working and deciding who we want to work with. Yeah, that's just okay. I saw uh, a few of you guys work on Hallmark lately. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. How did that come about? Um, so um, it started with Cass writing the script. So um, the executive over at Hallmark who was launching the um, Mahogany brand she contacted Cass about writing this particular script that she had in mind. She wanted to do something that was like under the Tuscan sun with black women. And Cass, of course, jumped on it right away. And um, as she was writing, she kept saying, you know, I really hope you get to direct this. I ho really hope you get to direct this. And I was like, I really hope I get to do it too. <laughs> and so it, it just worked out that, you know, we were hired separately because she was hired to write the script. And, you know, I had to have a meeting and, and basically pitch myself with the executive as to be the director because she had to interview several directors. And um, it was just the process. And so I had my interview. I really wanted to do it because it's definitely the type of projects that Cass and I always talked about that we wanted to do. And I didn't hear anything for like a month or a couple of months after my interview. And I was like, well, I guess I won't be directing that one. But then I got the call again. <laughs> I guess I will. And found out that I was, that they did want me. And then everything moved really fast. Um, and so that's how that came about. And just, 
it's, you know, just God is amazing. Yes, it's like is. you just got to align yourself. Stay focused. Stay true to your vision and your passion. Believe it even when it's hard mm -hmm. and keep going. And that's, that's what happened with that. Which brings me to my next question, which you are touching on already. Advice for aspiring actors, directors, and producers? To follow your passion and your instincts. Mm -hmm. And yes, sometimes we, we take jobs um, for different reasons. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes it's to work with a certain person. Sometimes it's to get that bag. <laughs> and, some, get that. And, and all of it is to get you to a point to be able to pick and choose what you want to do. And study your craft so you're prepared and ready when those opportunities come. Um, this is for me, it isn't a business about getting famous. It's a business about longevity and wanting to be able to create content over and over again for our peers, for us, for women, for women of color, for people of color, for little black girls, for um, young black men. That's my reason and my purpose. So everything that I that I pick and choose, it's for those reasons, to fit into those spaces somehow, some way. Um, so have your reason why. And if it is to be famous, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with it. It's just a tough business. So there's lots of things you can do to be famous. Yeah. At least have a little actor. morals and values behind <laughs> being famous when you do your uh, creative content. Because as you can see, 30 plus something years in the game, you never wavered from yeah. your faith, your morals, or your values. Yeah. And that's why you're here today. So uh, tell me, what's next for Terry? I am currently um, directing a two episode block for Kingdom Business yes. um, on BET. So I am currently doing that. And also prepping at the same time, which is why I'm so spastic and crazy right now. <laughs> That's good. Um, prepping for a Christmas movie that I will be shooting for BT in um, Are you shooting Newark. It? No. You're not shooting it. It's going to be, no. Okay. The Christmas movie, Kingdom Business, I am shooting Absolutely here. Absolutely Kingdom Business. Which I you know. Mm -hmm. And, um, but no, the Christmas movie is being shot in Atlantic City. Oh. Okay, okay. Let's still start with an A. We'll take yes. it. Yes. <laughs> starts with an A, yes. <laughs> well, listen, I'm just going to say this, but I'm sure all the fans that are out there listening know how to follow you. Yeah. But just in case we have some new fans coming in, tell them how they can follow Terry. It's just my name, Terry, T E R R I. J Vaughn, mm -hmm. V A U G H N, on all the platforms. Yes, do not leave out the J. Please. Don't leave out the J. I work really hard for that. Thank you so much, Terry, <laughs> for coming on to I Do Family thank Cardelia. You. It's been a pleasure. I'm so proud of you and so happy to be here. Of yes, course. thank you, thank you. Thank you. Audience, thanks for listening to I Do Film with my girl, Terry J. Vaughn. Make sure you follow her so you can stay up on everything that she has going on. And until next time, you guys be safe out there.